Hello again. In this video, we're going to look at points of inflection and the idea of concavity. So, the question is, find the coordinate of the point of inflection on the curve f of x is 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 3. Now, before we sort of look at the algebra of this, let's have a look at visually what we actually mean. So, using this uh, GeoGebra app, which I'll attach to the uh, YouTube video, if we've got this curve, we've got this curve, uh, 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 3 and we've got this tangent point here the tangent remember the tangent gives us the gradient at any point we've got these other points running around and I'll explain what they mean as well so let's just run it along the curve if we go to this point here for example okay we would expect I can't quite get in the right position but we would expect uh, here the tangent to be equal to uh, zero. We can see that dy by dx is roughly equal to zero at this point. And the same would be for this other minimum point here. In the stationary point we can see that that this is actually uh, nearly equal to zero as well at this particular point here. However, what we are interested in, you can see here, this part of the curve, the tangent is above the curve. Okay, and then at this uh, a particular point, just down here, about here, for example, the tangent will cross from one side to the other. Here we can see it is, it's slightly above, and at this particular point here, we will see that it is crossing from one side of the curve to the other side of the curve. So let's go back here, it's always above the curve, and then just after it, it's always below the curve. So the tangent on this particular curve is above the curve, above the curve, above the curve, above the curve, above the curve. We get to this point here, it cuts cuts through the curve, okay? And at this point here, it is um, below the curve. Now, the point where it cuts through the curve, actually, is called a point of non-stationary point of inflection. So that, that's that point there, which is where an x is equal to, actually, minus, minus one half, okay? And the y coordinate is also minus one half. Okay, now, if we look at these other points here, at the stationary point, oh, sorry, at the particular point, the point of inflection, the one that says P double dash, which is the, well, the value of the second derivative at that point, we can see it's actually equal to zero. So we can find these points of inflection by finding where the second derivative, which is the orange curve here for this particular one, is actually equal to zero, and it's equal to zero here. Okay, if we put the first derivative in, okay, we can see here that we have a stationary point on the first derivative, which is where the second derivative is equal to zero. And going back to that maximum minimum point, you can see here, we can see that the value of p dash is equal to zero, and likewise here the value of p dash is equal to zero. Okay, so it's enough looking at this. We'll come back to this at the, in a minute at the end. So, how do we do it algebraically? So we've got f of x is equal to 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 3. We're going to differentiate the curve. Remember the differentiate curve, if f of x is ax to the n, f dash of x is a n x to the n minus 1. So differentiating this is two, 3 times 2, which is 6x squared plus 6x minus 4. And then we need to differentiate again to find the second derivative. So we find the point of inflection by putting the second derivative equal to 0. So f double dash of x, that would be 12x plus 6, and then nothing from the 4. All right, so for point of inflection, the second derivative, f double dash of x, is equal to 0. So we'll put that equal to 0. So 12x plus 6 is equal to 0, and we'll solve it. We're going to get 12x is equal to minus 6. x will be minus 0.5. So we should just, we're going to test what the gradient is either side of it. Okay, so using the first derivative, we're going to just test just before that point and just after. So when x is less than minus 0 0.5, then f of minus 0 0.75 is equal to 6 times minus 0 0.75 squared plus 6 times minus 0 0.75 minus 4. Now, when we work that out, if we did that on our calculator, we'll find it's negative, because we knew the gradient just before was negative. If we go back to this, let's get rid of these for a minute. Just before the point of inflection, the gradient is negative. 
and then just after the point of inflection, so I'm going to take minus 0 0.25 and do the same thing, put it into the first derivative. Again, it will be less than 0. We know, going back to this, just after the point of inflection, just after the point of inflection here, it is negative. So just before it's negative, just after it's negative, so there must be a point of inflection because the gradient is going the same way in both parts. Right, so the conclusion is that, that the x-coordinate minus 0 0.5 is a point of inflection. So finding the y-coordinate when x is equal to minus 0 0.5, remember it's a good idea to write this out, f of x is equal to 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 3. So don't substitute back into the wrong thing. Uh, so we're going to have 2 times minus 0 0.5 cubed plus 3 times minus 0 0.5 squared minus 4 times minus 0 0.5 minus 3. Well, uh, minus a half cubed, so better maybe to think of the fraction, will be minus 1 eighth. So we're going to have 2 times minus 1 eighth. This is going to be uh, plus a quarter. So we're going to have 3 times plus a quarter. And we're going to have minus 4 times minus 2, which is plus 2. And we've still got that minus 3 on the end. Here we're going to get minus 2 fourths. So, uh, 2 eighths, which is minus 1 quarter, plus 3 quarters. Now, 2 is the same as 8 over 4, and minus 3 is minus 12 over 4. And then we're going to do minus 1 plus 3 plus 8 minus 12. It's going to give me minus 2 over 4, which is going to give me the y corner as minus 1 half. Then we write down the conclusion. And, of course, if you've got a calculator here, and this is a calculator paper you just do on a calculator, we're going to have that, that minus 1 half x is minus half, y is minus a half, is the point of inflection. The thing is, this is a non-stationary point of inflection. So going back to this applet, so that, there's, there's a value, and remember, at that particular point, my, my uh, tangent will cross from one side of the curve to the other, okay? And the second derivative, the second derivative... Okay, which is actually a straight line, will be actually zero at this point. Now, from here onwards, the second derivative is, has a negative value, and that means that the curve is called, said to be concave downwards. And for a curve to be concave downwards, the tangent, if we look at the tangent here, will always be above the curve, like this. You can see the tangent above the curve, all right, and that the at that particular point, the second derivative, the second derivative is negative. Okay, so the second derivative is negative when we have concave down. We can see it here, the second derivative is negative. Now, at the other point, let's just take, let's just click this off. Uh, so, past the point of, uh, point of inflection, we see that the tangent is below the curve. And we, what we have here is that the curve is said to be concave upwards, and that means the tangent is below the curve. Maybe we draw the tangent. Okay, so, put it all together now. Okay, so we've got above the curve, above the curve, the tangent is above the curve, above the curve. Here, the tangent crosses from one side to the other, and then underneath the the uh, tangent is below the curve, this is said to be concave upwards, okay? And if you want to find where a curve is uh, concave downwards, then you need to find out where the second derivative is negative. If you want to find where the curve is concave upwards, you need to find where the second derivative is positive. Okay, so this has been a video for you to try and find non-stationary points of inflection, which is this point here, and to, to determine the where a curve is concave downwards and where a curve is concave upwards. Okay. So in conclusion, when f double dash of x is less than zero, negative, the curve is concave downwards. And when f double dash of x is greater than zero, the curve is concave upwards. Concave downwards means the tangent is above the curve, and concave downwards means that it's con uh, concave upwards means the tangent is below the curve. Okay, so there's been a video here to help you with uh, points of inflection and concavity. Thank you very much for watching.